Hey, good after good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you. This was a great conversation, um, and we, we appreciate everyone for joining. Um, so we're we're now transitioning into the press briefing portion of this. If you were asked to remain on the call, we ask that you stay on, and we will get to you. Um, uh, if you are not, you're you're welcome to stay on. But you're by no means required to. Um, so, uh, we are going to begin by, uh, throwing it back to the BP, um, to sort of discuss, uh, or give an overview of what was discussed, uh, in the course of the call. Um, following that, we will be hearing from, um, uh, A.T. Mitchell from Man Up. Um, after that, Lauren Collins, uh, from the Flatbush Bid, um, and we'll start with that. Um, so as I mentioned, if you were not explicitly asked to remain on the call, um, you're welcome to sign off. But if you'd like to remain, please feel free. Um, and we will turn it over to questions after the speaking order concludes. But with that, I'll turn it back over to Borough President Adams. Uh, uh, thank you, Jonah, uh, Candace, and Pastor Morose, and over 90 participants uh, in this uh, borough uh, that have joined us to state uh, we want to help. And I think this is a real signal that during the crises, uh, there are countless number of New Yorkers and a countless number of Brooklynites that don't want to remain on the sidelines. They want to assist in any way that's possible. On the call this morning, we've heard, we have heard great ideas from block associations, from bids, from religious groups, and most importantly, um, from, from our uh, crisis management team, A.T. Mitchell and, and Anthony Newell and others have joined us. And with police saying that we want to be a part of fixing this problem. One thing that has resonated throughout this entire call, this is not a, an, an enforcement issue. This is a reculturing. This is util utilizing the credible messengers that we have in our city and in our borough. These are the men and women who every day make sure businesses run smoothly, make sure that health issues are addressed, make sure that our block association ensure that the streets are clean and to inform the residents. These are people who already are communicated, communicating with their fellow citizens every day. And to leave them on the sideline is only handicapping a very important initiative. We've, we've ha we have had a trial run while we're in this shutdown period. Through this trial run, we are clear that this is not something the police should be doing. This is something that should be community-led. When the city moves to open, it should open by opening its arms in the minds of the decision makers that our everyday New Yorkers should play a role in reculturing their fellow citizens. What does that mean? That means give them the supplies they need. Every bid should be given an adequate amount of supplies. Every block association should be given an adequate amount of supplies. A.T. Mitchell from Man Up has acknowledged the thousands of masks uh, his team and other CMS members ha have distributed uh, throughout this, the entire borough. We need to engage people in real conversation and use this as a teaching moment. As we hand out masks to and to engage people, also hand out basic real information on what they can do to prevent the spread of COVID-19. There are many thoughts that this virus is going to come back with Avengers in October and November. So let us be prepared now by engaging those online first line responders to these issues. First line responders are more than our police and our nurses and our doctors and our healthcare professionals. They address the intervention aspect of this. But we also have first line responders who are addressing the prevention aspect of this. And they are just as important and often overlooked. 
And so we want to thank again the over 90 plus civic community, cure violence, volunteers, organization, nonprofits that joined us this morning who are sending a strong signal that they want to be part of addressing the problem and not allow our communities to go into a conflict period with our law enforcement. We saw what happened in the past through the overuse of stop and frisk. The videos that we witnessed last week send a chilling reminder that if we do not handle this correctly, we can create long-standing, if not permanent, disruptions between the police and the communities that they sworn to serve and protect. This is a grassroots effort of reculturing New Yorkers under this new norm of living with COVID-19 and how do we continue to do it in a healthy fashion that we don't reverse the trauma of what happened over these last few weeks. And so I want to turn it back over uh, to Jonah, but again, I want to thank all of you who have joined us, our religious leaders, opening the houses of worship for testing, uh, and the acknowledgement that we're seeing that you are essential employees, uh, communicating with our civic and, and bids, our business groups. Uh, this is what it's going to take to get us through this, and I thank you for participating in this Zoom uh, conference and discussion and participating and finding a solution to the problem. Thank you very much. Jonah? Thank you, thank you Borough President. Um, so to members of the press that are joining or have joined us, just a reminder, um, after the speaking order concludes, you will have an opportunity to ask questions. You're welcome to write those in the chat or um, raise your hand uh, following the conclusion of the speaking order. Now we want to hear from uh, A.T. Mitchell with Man Up, and after that, it's going to be Lauren Collins with the Flatbush Avenue bid. Yes, good afternoon, Jonah, and a good afternoon, Borough President Eric Adams, and again, to all of my colleagues and my comrades that are out here on the first line, um, working every day, night, tirelessly to make sure that we provide our community members with all of the necessary things that they need. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to be able to speak on behalf of the crisis management system, um, we are a 22 site, 60 organization system here in the city of New York. We cover every borough um, from the Bronx to uh, all the way to Staten Island. And we have been on the first line every day since the coronavirus has entered into our community's midst. We have also been working very diligently with the community prior to COVID. And we are very much involved in making sure that the highest risk members of the community are serviced and serviced properly. And as we've seen the uh, uptick in the amount of encounters that the police department has had with certain neighborhoods and communities of color and those outcomes that have been videotaped and gone viral, we actually have made it our business to make sure that we uh, further remind the city of New York that we are here, that the crisis management system, cure violence organizations are here and ready to do our part. We have always been on the first line doing our part, and now we want to continue to do so. If anything, the 311 responses does not require an enforcement or law enforcement officers to respond. It requires community engagement on um, people to respond. And that's who we are. We are the people who are trained, and we are the people who are most familiar with the people in the community, and we know how to engage them. And we would like to do so, not with just rhetoric, but we want to be armed with the necessary supplies and the resources that when we approach these individuals and communities who are more than likely already dealing with a tremendous amount of anguish, grief, despair, considering you know, what has happened throughout these last two months. We want to make sure that we have the resources that they need and to be able to help them help themselves at the end of the day. And as we approach the summer, you know, we at the Cure Violence Global level have always put together what we call the Summer of Peace, where, you know, June and July and August is when we go into another gear. And we literally make sure that we try to curb the violence that's happening between community members, unnecessary violence, and senseless gun violence. And so, again, we're going to need the entire city's support, 
we have already known it with the borough president as our BP that we always had his office support but we're gonna need everybody else's support because now we're gonna be fighting two viruses at the same time. We're gonna be treating the gun violence as a virus and dealing with the coronavirus as a, another means. And so our work has been kind of like compounded. So at the end of the day, I would appreciate if everybody can keep in mind that the resources and the supplies should be given to those of us that are credible, those of us that have the relationships and have the skills to know how to engage people with respect. At the end of the day, that's all people want at the end of the day is to be respected. Thank you, Vera President. Jonah? Is Jonah unmuted, unmuted Candace? Sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, next, we'd like to hear from uh, Flatbush Avenue bid director, uh, Lauren Elvers Collins. After that, uh, we're going to go to Pastor Lewis Straker, Jr. Hi. Um, yes, I'm Lauren Elvers Collins. I'm the executive director of the Flatbush Avenue bid, which is Flatbush Avenue from Parkside to Cortellu, and also the Church Avenue bid, which is Church Avenue from Coney Island Avenue to Flatbush Avenue. Um, the whole idea of having clergy and the community come in and talk to people and reach out to people is such a brilliant idea and such a better idea than some of the problems that have been happening recently. Not just to decrease the enforcement issues and problems that have been happening with people being arrested, but also to get the message out since COVID has been impacting minority communities so much more than other communities. Um, as far as the bid, we have about 400 to 450 property owners and businesses, many from other countries, many who speak other languages. And what we would really love to see and what we can support is widespread distribution of masks at central locations, at churches, at subway stations that are well used, at really popular shopping destinations, um, as well as better signage and more frequent signage about what six feet means. I think social distancing is a hard thing to grasp when, you, when the virus is invisible. And I also have found that many people don't know what six feet is. Even I don't always know about it. So seeing those signs and seeing them everywhere will really help people keep things safe. Even outside stores where people are actually maintaining a six foot distance, if anyone's walked by stores, you often don't see that and all those people are at risk and all the people they're standing next to and their neighbors and their mothers and fathers are at risk. So we will support whatever kind of clergy initiative. And um, just to add one thing, the idea that I keep on hearing about engaging teens, engaging young people who are now not able to access SYEP is fantastic. And they will also bring that message back to their, to other teens as well as to their families. So thank you for having this really important meeting today. Thank you so much. Uh, next, we're gonna hear from uh, Pastor, Pastor Lewis Straker uh, Jr. Uh, after uh, uh, pa the pastor, we'd like to hear from uh, Nicola Cox from the uh, Su Sullivan Ludlam Stoddard Neighborhood Association. Thanks. Hi, good morning, uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, grace and peace to you all. My name is Pastor Louis Straker Jr. I am the lead pastor of the Reflections Church and also a member of the 67th Precinct Clergy Council, aka the God Squad, under Pastor Guilford Monroe. So I want to thank uh, the borough president on this call and all of the community uh, leaders and all of my colleagues that are on here, clergy, uh, for the uh, efforts that we're making now that I'm really excited about. Uh, the community engagement. I love how the brother from Man Up uh, stated that this is not enforcement, but engagement. And it's important that we engage our communities at this time. A lot of our people are going through so many uh, things and the trauma of this pandemic have left people uh, with so many uh, mental health issues and financial issues. And it's important that as clergy, uh, that we are engaging, that we understand who they are. I mean, we are the borough of churches. Brooklyn is the borough of churches, and there is no uh, church without the community, and there is no community 
uh, without the church. And so we go hand in hand, and I'm really excited about getting out there and engaging with our young people, especially as the weather uh, starts to warm up. You know, they are coming out, and we know that uh, gun violence and all of these things escalate uh, during these times of warm weather. And I believe that it is the clergy and the community activists and the leaders that need to be out there instead of the police. Uh, we know our communities, they trust us, and it's important that we have a say uh, in maintaining the health and the well-being of our people. And so as a, as a clergy council, uh, we've been out there uh, already on the grounds handing out masks and uh, gloves. And uh, also we have our food pantries, which is another important piece right now as many people are dealing with uh, food issues. And so we have a number of churches that are handing out uh, food and items so that uh, our communities can uh, stay healthy and strong. And so we're doing whatever we can. And we're looking to make sure that we also keep in the forefront the census as well, because as you know, uh, when it comes to resources, uh, how important the census is, and, and unfortunately COVID-19 has really overshadowed the importance of filling out that census and the resources, but we need to keep that message, especially in these times when we look at what's happening, we need to keep that message in the forefront. So we're here doing whatever we can, uh, um, looking to make, to do uh, whatever we can to touch the community, to help our people, to uh, keep our people focused in these difficult times. And I think that the presence of uh, spiritual leaders and people in the community that care will go a lot further than any enforcement uh, for, or law enforcement activities. We are the ones, we are the community, we are the church, and it's our time to raise up and be the church beyond our four walls. So I thank you for this time. Thank you. Next, we'd like to hear from uh, Nicola Cox. Uh, after that, uh, Rabbi Yosef Holtzman. Um, and then we're going to close it out with Dana Racklin from NYC Together. Thank you. Hi, thank you. Again, my name is Nicola Cox. I'm with the Sullivan Ludlam Stoddard Neighborhood Association. And I joined the call today as one of the many block associations in um, Brooklyn and across the city and wanted to know how we could help with this effort. Um, you know, this has been, um, you know, devastating for the community overall to be socially distant from each other has been difficult. And we're trying to find a way to now operate in this new normal. Um, we are definitely a resource. We have um, the block associations. We have groups that participate in the Greenest Block uh, contest that the um, Brooklyn Botanic Gardens hosts every year, and there are a number of other avenues. Most of us have block parties and have registered that way. So there are a number of different ways that we can reach out to block associations, whether they're formal or informal, but we are the grassroots level that can help with the community building that will be needed to help us as we start to transition. Um, we have norm, new norms that we need to create, and the block associations and other local groups are a great way to start. In addition to the churches, as Mr. Stryker mentioned, there are other ways that we can reach out to the youth. And I think the block associations are a great way to start because we are multi-generational. My block, for instance, we have a number of seniors. We have the school age children that are looking for ways to be engaged. And I think the block associations would be a great way for us to start. So I'm looking forward to uh, working with the borough president and other community groups, our, our, our community board, in any way that we can help as we start to build a new normal in Brooklyn. Next, we'd like to hear from Rabbi Yosef Holtzman, uh, followed by uh, Dana Racklin from uh, NYC Together. Um, and then we're going to throw it back to the borough president for some closing remarks, and then we are going to open it up for press questions. Uh, as a reminder to press, you're welcome to either uh, raise your hand if you'd like to ask a question or write it in the chat and we'll read it out loud. Thank you. Thank you very much. To do, Rabbi Holtzman, 
chaplain at SUNY Downstate and the rabbi of the East Flatbush Jewish community. Mr. President, thank you very much. And as I said before, thank you for our friendship. Pastor Monroe, thank you, and thank you for the entire um, reverence and, and uh, pastors that all came together and showing a time of unity. And unity, only if we're together, united, we are able to pass by everything. And certainly, a pandemic like that, we have to come from our most hidden resources from the bottom of us and unite together. And if we unite together, especially leaders, especially spiritual leaders, which everything starts from mental, we certainly will be able to overpass everything. So we do appreciate the importance of this conference and to take it forward. Um, Mr. President, can I ask a question now or should I ask later? What, what am I uh, just... I can't hear you. You're muted. Or am I muted? I don't know. I don't hear you. Okay. We I, we will get to, we will get to your me. questions later. We just want to you know just have everyone that's, appreciate just, appreciate. Okay. So okay, thank again, thank you very very much, mm -hmm. and uh, let's move forward to to overcome the hurdle. And we all know that we go down to go up. So we really really we went very very down, and we hope that together we'll be uplifted to be able to go up higher and higher. I thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi. Uh, finally, we'd like to hear from uh, Dana Racklin at NYC Together. Uh, after that, we will throw it back to the borough president for some closing remarks and then open it up to uh, Q&A from the press. Thank you. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, once again, thank you, Borough President, for putting this together. So again, my name is Dana Racklin. I'm the executive director and founder of NYC Together a unique social justice organization that works with the police to leverage the skills and talents of young people to address community issues. Um, and so being nimble due to COVID-19 has led us down a really uh, interesting path working with many of you guys on the phone now. But the thing, the, the next iteration of that nimbleness will be addressing the summer youth employment program problem which we know that it was defunded. And then you have the complexity of, are we social distancing? How do you even hire kids if we're in that space? So we've put together a campaign in partnership with the borough president's office. Thank you, BP Adams, for being such a great supporter of that. Um, Chief Madry and our dear friend, Michael K. Williams, or Omar from The Wire, as many people know him, um, to build out a virtual learning platform that will uh, educate young people on the, all the issues around the disproportionate impact of COVID-19. So redlining, over-policing, the nutritional uh, disparities like food insecurities, food deserts, health inequities. Um, and then upon learning about all, uh, all of those things, they're going to be tasked with producing campaigns for their own communities and their own peers. Um, so whether it be virtual town halls for their, for their peers or TikTok videos and Instagram, um, actual posts that they could put out and posters. Um, and we'll always be coming back to our friends like Anthony at Bevo to say, hey, help us get this out to the community. But the idea is to make it youth led and to really dig into what the uh, institutional issues are and systemic issues that led us to this place. Um, and we will be paying these young people to participate in that. So if we're still social distancing at that point, it's going to be all virtual, similar to what they're doing in school. If not, we're gonna be using um, facilities within the police department uh, where we can keep people six feet apart. Um, so yeah, we're, we're really excited to launch this. We're excited for the collective uh, support that we've received on every level of the community to make sure that this happens. Um, and I've shared the GoFundMe page link in this to everyone here, but I could share it also on the side. But again, we're just super excited to think about how we could leverage young people, the same young people that are going to be outside and wanting to be with their friends like every other kid um, and turning them into change agents in their own community and really using their voices. So again, it's called Project LEAD, which stands for Learn, Earn, Advocate, and Deliver. Um, and that will be launching July, the two days after July 4th. 
And uh, we're just excited to be able to hire young people and uh, provide all the things that they need uh, supportively as we get through the crisis. Thank you so much, Dana. Uh, and I think that it was it would be we would be remiss if we did not uh, have a voice from someone from the New York City Police Department, a person that I've come to respect and his innovative thinking around how to get ahead of these problems instead of just responding. And I know uh, he has been carrying this out in his precinct in, in Brownsville. And what Dana is doing uh, about using this tragedy to as a learning experience on how to engage our young people uh, to use their social media and their method of communication is at the heart of what we would like to see. And one person who has done it uh, in a very effective way is Captain uh, St. Ford. And if Captain St. Ford is still on, we would like to hear your thoughts and some of the initiatives that you're looking to do to sort of de-escalate some of the tension. Uh, good afternoon, good, good afternoon, all. Um, thank you, Borough President, for organizing this. I uh, just want, wanted to share um, that uh, in the 7-3 precinct, um, the command that I'm assigned in Brownsville, <clears throat> um, we have a great relationship with our crisis management teams. Uh, we've been able to address our violence and uh, shooting conditions within the precinct, within the precinct, in coordination with our crisis management teams. Um, so. In that, we've been able to transition that, that effort into addressing uh, quality of life issues, including um, social distancing issues. Um, I just wanted to say that um, it's important that everyone is out there and helping out as far as our community partners, uh, but it's even more important that we uh, develop a, a strategy and how that those efforts look like. Look like. Um, in the 73 precinct, we've been able to uh, formalize a plan involving crisis management and as well as uh, po police department personnel um, in addressing these issues. Um, it starts in three phases. The first phase is uh, education, uh, how we inform the community on uh, these recent issues and conditions. The second phase is information sharing, um, is getting information out to our crisis management teams as far as where the issues are. And the last phase uh, is enforcement. Again, enforcement is a last resort. Uh, we, we, we're trying not to, to get into the enforcement phase and, and this is why we're partnering with our community partners to deter uh, conditions in the precinct. This way, the enforcement phase doesn't take place. Yeah, that's all I have. And thank, thank you, Captain, appreciate it. Um, we'd like to invite the press if there's any questions uh, that you have for the borough president or anyone else who has spoken, uh, you are welcome to raise your hand uh, or to um, write in the chat and we will read it out loud. Um, but in the meantime, we'd like to throw it over to the borough president for some closing remarks. Thank you, thank you, John. And I believe all um, that needed to be said uh, has been, and we are witnessing the diversity of solutions uh, to this problem um, from the cure violence of Anthony Newell and A.T. Mitchell and their uh, colleagues in this space to our clergy uh, and our faith leaders from the rabbis, from the reverends, the pastors, as well as our civic organizations, our bids and civic uh, groups and our block associations and the creative uh, energy in coordination with our law enforcement personnel that fully understands that the last resort should be enforcement. This is a re-education and a reculturing of how do we deal with the issue of COVID-19 on every aspect uh, of the level. So I wanna thank all that participated. And this should be a message uh, to uh, both the governor's office and the mayor's office uh, that we have citizens who are ready, willing, and able to use their uh, credible ability to get a message out. Let's mobilize them to be part of the solutions, and we are ready to address the issues that are in front of us. Thank you very much for participating uh, to all. Do we have any questions from the press? Uh, anything you'd like to ask the borough president? 
uh, or anyone else on the call, uh, you're welcome to now. Um, but if not, then uh, we would like to thank everybody who participated in today's call. Um, uh, a couple of housekeeping items. If, if, if there's anything uh, you need to ask uh, me that was not addressed on the call, or if you joined a bit later, um, you can reach me directly uh, at 929-291-8881. Um, and a recording of this call will be made available uh, following uh, this meeting. Um, uh, so with that, we want to thank everyone uh, who joined us today. Uh, for this important conversation um, and have a great rest of your day.